I'd like to thank Masker Products for sponsoring this video. Hey, I'm Matt, and today I'm very excited because I get to surprise my daughter with a nightstand that she's been asking for for months. One cool feature that I added to the nightstand was wireless charging. It has a wireless charger built into the tabletop so that she can just set her phone up there and it can charge overnight. So now she don't have to do all that manual labor of plugging the phone in. Stick around, because at the end of the video, we're gonna surprise her with this and catch her reaction on camera, and I'll let you see how she reacted to finally getting the nightstand she's been begging for. This actually is built to match the dresser that I built a couple of years ago. I'll drop a link to that build in the description if you're interested in watching that after this build. There's also step-by-step -step build plans linked in the description below if you're interested in making this beautiful nightstand for yourself. I went to my local home store to pick out the lumber and this is just common spruce. You wanna make sure to look at the ones you're picking out. Make sure you don't get one that has that line down the middle. That's the center of the board. It'll actually split on you or things like this. That's gonna cause a really gnarly looking board. I picked out four good boards and brought them home. First thing I do is cut out my legs. I cut three of these the exact same length. So it's gonna depend on what size legs you want. Then I gave them a light sanding to knock off the kind of a slick finish they had. And then just roll out a little paper to protect the workbench. Now it's time for the glue up. I'm gonna use a lot of glue here so you're gonna see it really squeezing out, but I wanted to make sure to laminate these well since these are gonna be our legs. You're gonna need six of these boards actually because we're gonna make two sets of three. Use plenty of clamps, make sure the good tight pressure. And just look at that glue squeeze out. Now I have used F style clamps in the past. If that's all you have, they work perfectly fine. Just make sure to protect the edges of the boards with a false piece so it doesn't dent your wood. So I cut out four pieces for the top and these actually were a little bit wompy jawed, so I'm gonna have to fix that. The way I fix that is just put it on a planer sled, shim it up and run it through the planer until I get one flat side. Then I run it back through the planer without the sled on the other side so that I have two flat sides. Then I joint one side dust off my all red woodworking push stick. Now I'm gonna cut the opposite side that I didn't joint. I'm gonna glue these panels up two pieces each using calls here so that they stay nice and flat. You see they're really flat. There's a piece, there's a space right there and right there that's just a little not flat, but it's gonna be just fine because when we glue them up, you're gonna see that seam's gonna fit nice and tight. Now we're gonna glue those two panels to make one large panel. Same thing here, still using calls on the large panel to keep it flat. Also make sure to try to alternate your grains if you can. Gave it a light sanding. So I found center and then marked each end so that I have actually a 16 inch panel. So I'm cutting just a little bit off of each side so that it matches. Now it's time to install the wireless charger. This one just measures four inches. I actually had a four inch hole saw and I made a jig out of MDF. Just cut a hole in that, made sure the charger fit in the hole. Then you just pick out a spot where you want your phone to sit on your nightstand. Now just use some double-sided tape, make sure the jig sticks to the top. So I used my eighth inch Craig setup block so that it leaves an eighth inch of material. So I don't want to cut too thin here. Used my plunge router, got it all set up, and then just started routing. I also have a guide bushing here installed into the router. Once the hole's cut out, make sure it fits. Then I routed a groove for the cable to run in. And then I realized I needed to route a little more right there where the cable plugs in. And there we have power. Look at that. Next, we're going to start working on the legs. I'm going to joint one side of this leg assembly so that we can cut this down, check for square on my table saw, and then cut those at two inches square. We're gonna have them two by two. So next I'm gonna fill the knot holes with the CA glue. This is really good stuff. You can, I've got links in the description to all the products used in this build. Sand everything nice and flat. I'm just sanding to 120 grit here. Then I cut all my legs to length. You can cut them however tall you want your nightstand. It's very important that all your legs match the same length. Pocket hole time. I'm using my Maska M2 pocket hole jig, set it at three quarters of an inch. I set my bit at seven eighths of an inch. It gives me just a little bit shallower of a screw hole so that when you actually tighten down the pocket hole screws, it doesn't bust through anywhere. Link in the description below to this Maska M2 pocket hole jig.
Next, I cut some quarter inch strips and laid them on the table so that I could get a quarter inch reveal like this. Put those strips down, lay your apron on there, and then you're gonna put a little bit of wood glue and screw everything in with pocket hole screws. Make sure you sand everything before you start assembly. It makes your life much easier. And I'm using an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws for this whole assembly. Now for the bottom pieces, I'm just gonna use two braces here. You're gonna drill pocket holes on each end. These are like an inch and a half wide. So I realized I messed up here. One, I put the pocket holes facing forward. So when you open the drawer, you'll be able to see them. Don't do that. And two, I put it this forward and should have been back here to allow this to inset a quarter inch. I messed up. Uh, it's not too terrible, but it did tear out a little bit right there. Since this is the front, we want a quarter inch reveal. I'm gonna cut off a quarter inch and then we'll take a piece of quarter inch strip and put on the face so that it hides the edge cream. So I've actually never done this before. I usually just pocket hole these two together and then pocket hole them into those braces. You can certainly do that. But I'm essentially gonna make a panel glue up. So our drawer slides are gonna go attach here and three quarters of an inch wouldn't be enough because we're still gonna have a quarter inch uh, inside there. You, there's a couple of more things you could do to fix that. You can actually inset these one more quarter of an inch and then this way a three quarter inch board or a one by board will fit flush so you can do your drawer slides like that. You could actually move these all the way in flush. I actually thought about it, but I didn't think it would look very nice. However, what I did was I just cut a quarter inch strip and then I'm gonna put that in there like that. That's gonna give us a flush, flush. We'll glue all this in place and our drawer slides will have something flat to reference again. It's time to build the drawer. Uh, I built this drawer using pocket hole construction. I have a whole video on building drawers. You can check that out. I'll link that in the description below. It goes in detail on how I build these drawers with pocket hole construction. Now I want to make the drawer slides. I set my saw on half inch, so I'm gonna rip some half inch strips. I was actually going to use ball bearing drawer slides, but I didn't realize that I didn't have any until I started this process. The opening for the drawer is actually 10 and a half inches wide, so I made the drawer nine and a half inches wide. Two half inch strips makes it 10 and a half. To attach them, I'm just using wood glue. I use CA glue so that I give it a quick stick until the wood glue dries. Make sure you leave a little bit of play in there for that drawer slide. I would recommend using the ball bearing drawer slides like I normally use, but if you wanna make your own, this is how you do it. Using double sided tape to stick the drawer slide on the drawer so I can make sure you get it positioned properly before I actually stick it on permanently. Next, I use a 45 degree chamfer bit to route a chamfer on the bottom of the tabletop so that it gives it a little more detail. I also done this on the legs, but I didn't go all the way to the bottom. I stopped just shy of the shelves as well as just shy of the top and bottom on the outside edges. Also, be sure to either chamfer or round over the bottom of your legs. This keeps this soft wood from splitting and breaking later on. I'm using tabletop fasteners. Again, I have a whole video on how to attach tabletops to the table. I use a biscuit joiner this time. This is the first time I've done that. It actually worked extremely well. I usually use a quarter inch straight bit on a router to do that. This gives your tabletop the ability to move naturally as it expands and contracts. Then give everything a final sand of 120 grit. Yeah, it's looking good, ain't it? I like that I went with the two by two legs. That makes it kind of a chunky look. It also makes it really solid and not top heavy at all. A couple of things, I wanna point out some mistakes because 
we all make them. None of us is perfect. There was only one that was ever perfect. I make a lot of mistakes, but I'm okay with them most of the time. Check this out. So the drawer is, sits in there just a little crooked, as you can see probably when I bring this out a little better. We're talking probably, what, a sixteenth or so. It clears, which is what we were wanting. Uh, what ha happens is most likely is this runner here should have been, or actually this runner, should have been just a little higher, which would have dropped this down a little bit. I'm okay with that because normal everyday life, you're never gonna see that. The edges come out really nice. They're square, so that, that's good with me. So let's get some primer and paint on here. What I'm most excited about is the big reveal when or my daughter gets surprised with this for her birthday because she's been asking for a nightstand for months. I just used some good quality primer from Sherwin-Williams, sprayed one coat on the bottom, flipped it over, sprayed another coat on the top. After the primer's dry, I use a 400 grit sanding block and sanded the whole thing down just so that it gets really smooth. I went with Benjamin Moore Regal here in Oxford White. It's very similar to the color I used on the dresser that I built for. Same thing here, I spray a coat, sand it, spray a coat, sand it, and then I wind up with three coats. You don't sand on the third coat. It should come out pretty smooth. After that paint dried overnight, I installed the tabletop, put a t-shirt down or something so you don't scuff it, run the wire now if you've done it like me so that it can come out the back. And then I just screwed these down front and back. I couldn't access the ones on the sides because my drawer pulls got in the way. Touch up any paint that you may have scuffed. Don't be like me and paint these drawer glides because it makes it stick too much because the tolerance was too tight. So I actually sanded it off a little bit with that 400 grit block and then add a little paste wax to the grooves to help everything slide nicely. It actually worked out pretty nice. Now I measured and found center of the drawer and then drilled a hole for the drawer pull. I'm gonna use the exact same kind that I use on her dresser so that everything matches. I had to use a little Forstner bit here so that we could drill down a little further so that the screw reached through. And there it is. Now it's time to give it to her. I'm so excited. Let's see how she reacts to seeing her nightstand she's been begging for for months. Hey, you can build this too. It's not hard. It's a really easy beginner woodworking project. It looks harder than it is when you start looking at building furniture, but you can do this easy. Just check out our store, 731woodworks.com slash store for this and all of our other build plans. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> well, has a drawer. This has wireless charging built in. <laughs> How in the world phone. did you do that? I'm in it. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> if you like builds like this, be sure and hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content we've got coming. Hey, thank you for watching. Click that box right there if you want to see the matching dresser to this nightstand. And then also if you want a different style nightstand or end table, there's a video right there. It's one of my favorite builds that I've done so far. If you click either one of those videos, you get that big old virtual fist bump. Thank you for watching.